Hey guys, welcome to lesson 11 to a multiplying rational expressions. Our objective for today is that I can multiply rational expressions and that I can simplify complex fractions. Our essential understanding, you can multiply and divide rational expressions using the same properties that you would use to multiply and divide numerical fractions. Okay, so problem number one is simplifying a rational expression. We wanna know what is the product and state any excluded value. So just like whenever we multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators across, multiply the denominators across, and then simplify if we can. So fifth, five times three is 15. Y cubed times Y is Y to the fourth. There's nothing for us to simplify, and our excluded value is zero. Remember, excluded values are anything that would make our denominator zero. So the denominator in any part of these, okay? All right, <clears throat> letter B, we're gonna multiply across, so we need to distribute x times x plus one. So that's gonna give us x squared plus x. And our denominator, we distribute and we uh, foil, so we get x squared minus, minus 5x plus 6, okay? And what is our excluded values? It's gonna be anything that makes our denominator zero. So it's gonna be two and three. X cannot equal. There we go. All right, you guys try letters C and D and then Mr. Zo and I are gonna go through them. So letter C, three times negative two is negative six. X squared times X is X cubed. Our only excluded value on this one is zero. Letter D, we have x times x minus two. That's gonna give us x squared minus two x. And it's over x plus three, or sorry, x squared. Uh, we could write it out as our two terms. x squared, sorry, uh, plus eight x plus 15. Okay, x squared plus eight x plus 15. What are our excluded values? Well, negative three would make x plus three zero, and negative five would make x plus five zero. So those are our two excluded values. Okay, all right, moving on to problem number two, using factoring. Yay, factoring. Yay, factoring. Now. Uh, again, we want to know what is the product and we want to state any excluded values. For these kind of problems though, what I want you guys to do is start by factoring. So you're going to multiply your two terms together, but you want to factor first because if we're, we don't want to multiply and then factor out extra terms if we've got stuff that's going to cancel out in the first place. So x squared plus 3x plus 2 is going to be x plus 2, x plus 1. All right, we're gonna factor it, finding products of two that add up to three. Our denominator, we have x plus two, and we have an x. So now let's go through and start canceling. Our two x plus twos cancel out, and we're left with ones. And we can cancel out one of our exponents, so we cancel out the squared, and we cancel out the x. And now we just need to rewrite what remains. We have three x times x plus one over one. And x cannot equal, well, it would be negative two would make one term zero, and zero would make the other term zero. Okay, so we always wanna start by factoring and cancel things out if we can first. <clears throat> so we rewrite our numerator, we've got the quantity x plus one times the quantity x minus two over, well, four x minus eight, we can factor a four out of that, and we're left with x minus two and x squared plus four x plus three. We're looking for fat multiples of three that add up to four, and it's gonna be x plus three, x plus one. So cancel out what we can. Our x plus ones cancel out, and we get a, we're left with just ones. x minus two over x minus two cancels out. We're left with ones. Numerator is one. Denominator is four and we have an x plus three. 
x cannot equal 2, 3, sorry, negative 2. No, it's positive 2. Oh, it's two. positive 2. Yeah, it is positive 2. So positive 2, negative 3, and negative 1. So there's three excluded values for this one because we have three binomials in our denominator. Okay, uh, letter C and D, I want you guys to try on your own and then we're gonna walk you through them. So letter C, x minus six, nothing we can factor out there, and x minus four, nothing we can factor out there. Denominators, we've got x squared plus four x minus 32. So we're looking for factors of negative 32 that add up to four. Well, I can see that that's gonna be a plus eight and a minus four. So if we look at what we can cancel out, the x minus fours are canceled. And it looks like that's gonna be it. So we're left with x minus six over x plus eight times x plus two. What are my excluded values? Well, first one is gonna be negative eight. Second one is gonna be a positive four. And third one, negative two. Okay. Letter D, we're gonna have to do some factoring in multiple places on this one, so let's get to work. Uh, M squared minus M minus 20. So I'm looking for factors of negative 20 that add up to negative one. So I'm gonna say that's gonna be uh, M minus five and M plus four, okay? In our denominators, m squared minus 4m, I can factor an m out of that, so I'm left with m times the quantity, m minus four. m squared minus 25, that looks like the difference of perfect squares to me, so that's gonna be m plus five and m minus five. Special cases, make sure you remember them. So let's start canceling. So m minus five cancels out and one of our m's is gonna cancel out and we're gonna be left with 2m times m plus 4 over m minus 4 and m plus 5. Our excluded values, there's gonna be four of them here, so we're gonna have a zero, a positive 4, negative five and positive five, okay? All right, moving on to problem number three. We have multiplying a rational expression by a polynomial. Again, we want to say what is the product and state any excluded values. And just remember that that polynomial is just a fraction over one. So this is really nothing and nothing new for us. Um, and so we're gonna need to factor, yay, factor. So uh, two times the quantity, x minus seven. And that's gonna be over four, or no, two times the quantity, two x minus three. Well, now we need to factor six x squared minus 13 x plus six. So we're looking for box method and we're trying to find factors of 36 that are gonna add up to negative 13. So I believe that's gonna be a minus nine and a minus four. Sorry, did I jump your gun? Hmm. My gun is fine, thanks. Okay. All right, so now you just have to factor, factor with box method. We've got three X and negative two. 2x and negative 3. So 2x minus 3, 3x minus 2, and we now just need to cancel. Figure out what we got that is going to cancel. So 2x minus 3 cancels out, and our 2 over 2, well that reduces to just 1 over 1, and now we can just simplify. So we're going to be left with x minus 7, and 3x minus 2, and there's nothing but 1's in our denominator, so if you write it over 1, that's fine. If you just wrote it as x minus 7 times 3x minus 2, that's also fine. 
Um, what can make our denominator zero? Well, we need to solve 2x minus 3 for zero, and that is going to be 1 half. Sorry, 3, three halves. halves. 3 halves. Okay. All right. Letter B. We've got lots of factoring to do on this one. Yay, factoring. Yay, factoring. All right. So we're looking for products of 1 that add up to 2. That's just going to be x plus 1 x plus 1. Denominator, we've got x squared minus 1. Difference of perfect squares, x minus 1, x plus 1. So glad we learned all of that in chapter 8. I know. You know what's also great? That I warned them this was all coming back in chapter 11. Love chapter 8. Lots of times. All right, so we're looking for factors of negative 3 that add up to 2. So that's going to be x minus 1 and x plus 3 and we're over 1. So let's start canceling out. I see an x minus 1 and an x minus 1 that cancels out. I see an x plus 1 and an x plus 1 that cancels out. And it looks like that's all I got. So we've got x plus 1 times x plus 3 over 1. x cannot equal positive or negative 1. Okay. All right, you guys try letters C and D on your own, uh, and then Ms. Deer's own I will walk you through them. So 3x plus 4, nothing we can do there. It stays 3x plus 4. 3x minus 9, we can factor a 3 out, and we're left with x minus 3. And x squared plus 5x minus 24. So we're looking for factors of negative 24 that add up to 5. Uh, so I know that's going to be an 8 and a 3. It's going to be plus 8 and minus 3. So we look at it. Our x minus 3 is cancel. And that's all that we can cancel. So we're left with 3x plus 4 times the quantity x plus 8, all divided by and x cannot equal positive 3. All right, letter D. We need to factor 3x squared plus 7x plus 4, so we're going to use box method. We're looking for factors of 12 that add up to 7. So it'll be a 3x and a 4x. So we get 3x plus 4 and x plus 1. That's all over 1. x squared minus 4x, I can factor an x out of that. And I'm left with x minus 4. And the denominator, well, let's see. I can factor an x out of that. And I'm left with 9x squared minus 16. Hmm. I wish there was a rule of what that could be when you have two perfect squares and you're subtracting them. What could that rule be? Oh yeah, difference of perfect squares. 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4. Um, so what you could do is once you do that second level of factoring, cross out your original so that you don't get confused over what is left uh, there. Okay, so let's start canceling. We've got our x's, those cancel out. Oopsies. Wrong one. Sorry, supposed to move this one and this one. Yep, 3x plus 4s cancel out. So we're left with x plus 1 and x plus, or x minus 4 in the numerator. And we're left with 3x minus 4 in the denominator. And x cannot equal negative 4 thirds. Negative 4 thirds. Or positive 4 thirds. Or positive 4 thirds. Or 0. Or 0. Three terms, three exclusions. Yep. All right, now, everybody's favorite topic, our blast from the past. It comes back in notes even. Um, so dimensional, dimensional analysis. This is what we did in chapter two, two six, uh, where we're converting units. So I uh, flushed that, that lesson, sorry. John Henry Kruger won the silver medal in the men's short track speed skating at the 1,000 meter event at the 2018 Winter Olympics with a time of 1 minute and 24.864 seconds. What was his speed 
in kilometers per hour. So the first thing I want to do, since minutes and seconds are throwing me off a little bit, I just want to convert that into just seconds. Uh, so one minute is 60 seconds. So 60 plus 24.864 is 84.864 seconds. So he's going 1,000 meters. So we're starting with 1,000 meters. And we need to include our units. And he did that in 84.864 seconds. Okay, and now we want to convert. How did you get that? So I, I got that by taking the one minute and 24.864 seconds. And I know that one minute is 60 seconds. So then I just added the two pieces together. So 60 plus 24. Okay. Okay. So now we need to convert. And what I want to do, well, hey, you guys did this in science class where you were doing your metric conversions. Yay. One kilometer is 1,000 meters. Okay. And now we just need to convert our time. And so we've got 60 seconds is one minute. And 60 minutes is one hour. So now let's take a look. We can cancel. So just the way we we're canceling things in our uh, numerators and denominators, we're canceling units the exact same way. So meters cancel out, seconds cancel out, and minutes cancel out. And we're left with kilometers over hours, kilometers per hour. So now we just need to uh, multiply across and simplify. So 1,000 times 60 times 60 is 360,000 over, we've got 84.864 times 1,000 times 1 times 1, and you get 84,864. And then when you divide that using your calculator, you are going to get 4.24 kilometers per hour. And Mr. Bolin will be available at lunch to explain these to you if you get stuck. Yes, I will. All right, so the moon is about 240,000 miles from Earth. How many days would it take a spacecraft to reach the moon if it had traveled at an average speed of 100 miles per minute? All right, so let's start with our known quantity. Okay. Well, how else are people going to start working at NASA unless they learn this stuff? All right, so we're going to start with our known quantity, which is 240,000 miles from Earth. And we want to know how many uh, days it's going to take. So let's use a ratio that we have involving time, or distance and time. So we have one minute over 100 miles. You just are so excited excited to do Damn. these problems. Yes, I like these problems. And now we just go with our time uh, conversion. So one hour is 60 minutes. And one day is 24 hours. So now we have our units. We can cancel our units out and we're left with, well, the miles cancel out. The minutes cancel out. The hours cancel out. What am I left with? Days. All right, so multiply across 240,000 times one times one times one is just 240,000. And one times 100 times 60 times 24, it's gonna be 144,000. So 240,000 divided by 144,000 is approximately 1.67 days. So going at that speed, it would take uh, a little over a day and a half to get from the Earth to the Moon. All right, that is the notes for this lesson. Make sure you fill out your level of understanding. Write down any questions or confusions that you may have had from the lesson, and make sure you write down your summary. Have a great day.